May I just ask you, because you refer to the young children, and I am completely with you because it is the younger you start helping the children to understand the bigger picture, the, the easier it is because they understand in a natural way when they are young. Um, but what do you do with teenagers? Because they are already in that state. It's all about me. It's all about my world. And I want to fulfill. I, I have so many friends around me who have issues with their, with their teenage uh, children. And um, although as a society, I think we have gone to the point where we say it's natural. I don't think it is natural. I know that it can be different. It's not natural. We just have under, we ha have accepted that it's natural. But I'm 100% convinced that if we find another approach, which we, we already discussed from, from young, young age onwards, it can be changed. But what can we do maybe also as, as um, older people to help teenagers to find their way? It's, it's really interesting question and, and it's not an easy subject. Yes. Yeah, I know. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in my experience, the youth, you know, and the influence of social media, yeah. that there's so many challenges because once you get locked into a certain limited paradigm, mm -hmm. it's not easy to shift from that paradigm there needs to be a, a motivating factor mm -hmm. to get you to change direction mm -hmm. and sometimes it has to be pain you know to wake up it could be you know I, I had a, a young person who made a spiritual shift and is really doing wonderfully but it took uh, for them to get to a point that it, some a friend of theirs overdosed and died mm -hmm. and that help them to really do some soul searching. Okay. But if I can go back a little before that, what when I look at my own life, mm -hmm. I didn't have a bonding experience with the adult community. So I grew up in the 60s and my sphere of influence was my peer group. Mm -hmm. You know, so my initiations in life came on the streets in New York. <laughs> it didn't come from meaningful experiences mm -hmm. with adults. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, I never felt I was part of, of a tribe, you know, of, a, of, a, of adults that I was bonded in a meaningful way. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I went through uh, a bar mitzvah that was a, a totally ritualistic meaningless experience that did not help me to feel bonded to a larger reality or to the adult community. So as I said, my initiations in life came more in the streets in New York to my older peer group in an Irish and Italian neighborhood. So where I'm going with this is I felt after I saw what my experience was that when I had children, I was going to have a very different experience with them. So I began doing some what I call meaningful rites of passage, where I allowed my children to interact with myself and friends that were referred to as these are your spiritual aunts and uncles. And we did a process in which they really felt more bonded mm -hmm. to adults and what I felt happened through that process. And they're both very successful. Uh, you know, they're um, doing great in the world. They're very spiritually grounded and centered and mm -hmm. uh, contributing to society. But through that experience, they were less influenced or not influenced at all by negative peer pressure, mm -hmm. you know, be, because they had this bond mm -hmm. and they felt these adults are, you know, 
my connection to this world mm -hmm. and it, it helped so much. Mm -hmm. And what I feel with our young people is they don't have that experience. So I really encourage creating meaningful rites of passage mm -hmm. that really bond our young people so they could feel I'm part of a tribe, mm -hmm. you know, I'm in connection with this adult community, with these wisdom keepers, with these elders. Mm -hmm. And I feel that makes a huge difference. And many of our youth that are struggling are struggling because they never had that bond. Uh, yeah, I'm completely with you. Yeah, okay, <laughs> lots to do. <laughs> but when I hear, when I listen to you, I can also hear that if you do not bond, we still can trust that life will lead everyone to one point where we start asking. I mean, I wasn't bonded exactly. with the adult exactly. community and life brought me exactly. uh, to a place mm -hmm. where um, spirituality became very important in my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm very hopeful that our young people and whatever struggles they're going through will find a way to use them as a wake up call to connect to a higher reality. Well, as you already said, it is the time and it's the time that more and more, I hear from more and more young people that they follow their heart and they really follow their heart. They are not ready to uh, walk any path that is given from society and um, in their young ages they are courageous to step out and even sometimes to wait a little while until of course that sounds easy it's not easy for them but they just know that what they think is expected from them is not the time yet and so they are in this mode where they try this and they try that but they just realize that there is something else that they want to contribute. And I, I'm, that gives me a lot of hope. Yeah, I'd like to add that when a young person really begins to connect with their heart and they begin to feel, mm -hmm. in, a, in a sense, a conscience, a, a way, you know, for example, my, my joke is if someone is really connected to their heart. They're coming from, do you need to be told the Ten Commandments? Do you need to be told don't kill? <laughs> you know, <laughs> your heart knows, you know. So once the heart connection is there and the heart opens, mm -hmm. if you're engaging in a situation that is not the best, your heart will be squeezed. Your heart will say, mm, that's not good. Mm -hmm. The heart will guide you. Yeah. And uh, many young people are following their heart, listening to their heart, mm -hmm. and they're uh, ready to be our next generation of leaders 